They were satisfied with the status quo, and I'm never satisfied with the status quo. Any gentleman's businessman could set up any kind of business at all. Every project starts out with a dream. This is a vision. This is a dream. I couldn't be a liar. I was born to, in an underprivileged way. People are entitled to make mistakes. Nobody's perfect. If you think you're smart, there's always somebody smarter than you. We've spent nine or ten or eleven billion dollars, but who's counting? Fair. Fear doesn't factor in. Until I was 32, I thought I couldn't hold down a job. He's an American business magnate, investor, and philanthropist. He's the chairman and CEO of the Las Vegas Sands Corporation. As of June 2015, he had an estimated fortune of $28 billion. He's Sheldon Adelson, and here are his top 10 rules for success. I've been working, I've been in business for 69 years since I was 12. And every time, well, after the first dozen or so businesses, I realized that the only way to get ahead was to do things different, differently than the way it was being done. And uh, uh, then I, I came to learn, which I finally learned at my ripe young age, that um, if you do things differently, success will follow you like your shadow. And you can't get rid of it. Mm -hmm. So that's what I did. So people doubted me because people just didn't do what I, what I would do. It's a matter of take, finding out what it is that an industry does and identifying the opportunity to, as to how to do it differently. And then being enough of a risk taker to actually do it differently. Mm -hmm. So people doubted me because nobody thought of doing it the way that I did. And uh, nobody had the, they didn't have the, they were satisfied with the status quo and I'm never satisfied with the status quo. My fundamental belief as an entrepreneur that if I were to make carpets, I don't have to be an expert in making carpets or suits. I need to know how to run a business. I'm a business generalist. And I, in every business is what I call the product area. So if I hire the people that know how to make carpets, then I could run that business just like any other generalist business. Or the same thing about suits. So I get other people apply. to form. The same, same principles, principles apply. apply. And what are those principles? The principles are fundamentally, think of it as a matrix. So you have a sheet of paper with a bunch of holes in it. And below each hole, you're supposed to put it on something and it helps all the dots to connect. Any generalist businessman could set up any kind of business at all. Okay, but, you know, to the eye, it's going to look as authentic as it, as it looks here. Okay. I, I'm going to, to see the what eye, the eye is. To the eye, it's exactly. going to look very authentic. Th very that's authentic. what I want to see, what the eye is this, going to this do. Is our, this is our challenge, I, and this well, is our commitment. Say, I don't say it can be done. I say I'm worried. Okay, you're not worried. No worries. Let's see, okay. No worries. Okay, good. It's, it's being done. So, Listen, no. This is Las Vegas. This Don't is it. Know. This is the strip. <laughs> this is the Campanelli Bell Tower. Here's the Doge's Palace. And here's the library building. Sheldon, is but this, this is real Venice. I thought we were in Las Vegas. No, where you're dreaming. Oh, this is real maybe Venice. I am. No, maybe I am. Venice. Venice. This is the real Venice. Yes. But it's oh, that's the same. Right. We have all the in your dream it will be the same, right? I'm making a two and a half billion dollar bet on that thinking. And I believe it'll work. I'm quite confident that it's going to be a winner. I mean, there is no equivocation in my mind whatsoever. None. See, because well, I, I could feel it. Dreaming. I don't know. Of we'll course see. I'm dreaming. Every project starts out with a dream. This is a vision. This is a dream. I don't know. I'm outspoken because I, I'm, I, I could never make a I couldn't be a liar. I can only tell the truth. I would be a very bad liar. I say that my because... My father told me... My father never left me with anything material, but he left me the richest, as rich as I could be, with values. And he always told me, never lie about anything. You gotta be honest. Because if you lie about one thing, the second time somebody's gonna ask you, you're gonna make up a lie to cover that first lie. And then pretty soon you've got a whole chain of lies and then you're completely exposed. Adversity is, is sometimes the, the mother of invention. You know, when you have to have something, necessity is the mother of invention. And when it's, there's an adverse condition or a series of conditions, 
in a particular industry. You have to find the solution. In my case, I always found I was born to in an underprivileged way. I couldn't get into the mainstream of business where I was born and raised in Boston because my family didn't come over in the Mayflower. My family, I was the first generation American in my family. And people who are in business, they say, the bankers, the old businessmen, they didn't allow people like me in. And I couldn't get in, so I figured a way that I had to do something different than the way everybody else did. These columns are done wrong. And these columns, that, the handful that I saw that are up, they have to be taken down and redone. Everybody knew that there was an, a certain level of aging, and anybody who thinks that that's, that is a level of aging and weathering is simply blind. So now you've got to make sure that you redo that piece. And I'm not going to accept any compromises whatsoever. But I don't want to demoralize any of the people that are working on the job, say, hey, you did a lousy job. I want them all feel as though they did, a, they did a very good job. Listen, people are entitled to make mistakes. Nobody's perfect all the time. Displeased well, with the columns, the he summons his team of architects to dissect the problem. Leroy went through this a dozen times that at the inside had to be absolutely unequivocally weathered and aged. So we have to provide the weathering and the aging immediately, you know, when we install it. You were the one, I am told, that said, make it smooth. I... Is that a fair statement? I said yes, make it, it we picked the smooth. But it's wrong, without any question. You cannot make it smooth. I'm not sitting here to criticize you or to chop your head off. I'm simply trying to get to the bottom of it so that we don't experience the same issue again. No, I'm not a bully. I resent that. I'm not a bully. If I raise my voice, it's only in frustration. I'm emotional. I think I would describe it as passionate in my beliefs. He walks in, goes right up to the piece, and this is the kind of piece that is going to be seen from 20 to 30 feet away. And he's going right up to the very edge of it, you know, with a magnifying glass. And, and we're just like, oh my God. And uh, he's pointing out things to us that he thought just was not acceptable or that were incorrect as it would be, you know. And so he, he's, he just said, well, give me a paintbrush. It starts taking off his jacket and I'll show, you know, I can show you what to do. And we're all like, Instead of telling somebody else, you go do it. Like in the military, they would, they, the captain, the general would stand in the back and he'd say, well, go, everybody charge. I don't do it that way. I say, follow me. And I see that the shadows are going in the right direction. Sheldon's back to review the painting. Mm. And I see that the shadows truly reflect the shape of the leaves where they didn't before, for instance, over here. These shadows, these shadows were over here. Listen, I know absolutely nothing about painting, but I want to ask you a question. Was I right? You were, um, there were certain things that, that had to occur that you had said that, you know, we're so close in, in, in creating the piece that it, when a new eye comes in, you see different things. So, um, it, it was um, There's an old expression, some good sometimes people are too close to the forest to see the trees. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I wasn't close to the forest. Mm -hmm. So we have your approval. Yes, you very definitely have my approval. Very enthusiastic. Now, how about these pieces? We were very poor. And my father put money, he was a cab driver, when he could get a job. He only had a sixth grade education. In Lithuania, not in where he came from, not here in the United States. Couldn't speak English when he got here. But he left me with this, with this belief that we were poor. And one day I asked him why I was putting the money into that charity box. He explained the whole thing to me and he made me promise that I would do it every day in my life. And as I told you, I didn't keep the promise per se, but I did keep the promise in spirit. And, um, and I asked him why he did that. Because we were poor as well. After he explained to me, he does it for the poor people. He said, no matter who or what you are, there is always somebody or some, there's always someone more than you are. If you're poor, there's somebody more poor than you are. If you think you're smart, there's always somebody smarter than you. And I kept that value with me till today. My parents are gone, may they rest in peace for 25 years, 27 years now. And, uh, but I kept that, I kept that value. So 
Philanthropy is not, I, it's part way responsibility, but I see philanthropy not necessarily or solely as a responsibility, I see it as an honor. So to support the community is both a responsibility and an honor. So being part of the community is what you are, and therefore you have the responsibility and you feel the honor of participating and supporting the community. It irritates me a little bit is how people look only at the short term. Mm -hmm. When my friend Steve once said, I don't want to be judged on a quarter to a quarter basis. Right. I mean, this is a long-term investment. And uh, you can't judge. They're getting down to, they're talking about uh, win an MOP per day for the last week. Mm -hmm. Pretty soon they're going to talk about MOP win or loss per hour. Right. <laughs> Then they'll have a reader board up and it'll show how much is won or lost per minute. <laughs> so this is all ridiculous. You know, you're in business for... The long term. For the long term. Right. We've spent nine or 10 or $11 billion, but who's counting? And in, in Macau, and uh, we're under construction with another property, and I've asked for permission to do yet another one, non-gaming, mm -hmm. without tables. Uh, I think that uh, uh, I, I didn't invest that kind of money just so that I could have the next week or two weeks. Mm -hmm. I invested that money over the long term. So where does fear factor in? Fear. Fear doesn't factor in. No? No such thing as fear. Not to an entrepreneur. Concern, yes. Fear, no. You weren't frightened? Really? Got a Bible? You didn't think I, was... I could lose the whole shooting match here? No. What motivates you to keep working as hard as you still are? You know, that's an interesting question. A lot of people don't seem to get it. It, have, it goes back to the time when I discovered that I was something called an entrepreneur. Until I was 32, I thought I couldn't hold down a job. I gave a talk at Babson uh, College, a business school in Boston, to something called the Entrepreneurial Exchange. And I asked the people, there were 300 kids in the audience, and I said, how many of you think you're entrepreneurs? And everybody raised their hand. And then I asked them, I said, how many of you are in the entrepreneur business or want to be in the entrepreneur business for money? Nobody's ever guessed how many people raised their hand. Too many people to guess here, so I'll tell you, one. Huh. That is the answer to the question. What is the reason why people want to be entrepreneurial? My answer is the sense of achievement to accomplish something. It's not the money. Now, I'm not gonna send the money back. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I made this video because Yoel asked me to. So if there's a famous entrepreneur that you want me to profile next, leave it in the comments below and I'll see what I can do. I'd also love to know which of Sheldon Adelson's top 10 rules hit you the hardest, had the biggest impact. Leave it in the comments and I'll join in the discussion. Thank you so much for watching. Continue to believe and I'll see you soon.